mini amps. Yes, it's been a while since I've done this Chinese mini amp invasion. You can check the video description for a playlist. We test an amplifier such as the Lapai LP2020A+. These were very popular back in the day, but I just recently found out about this one on Amazon. This Duke Audio Tone for $50. And I was like, man, this thing looks cool. It's got BU meters. I'm going to have to pick it up. It has multiple functions. Home speaker amplifier, headphone and headset amp, PC sound card, RCA aux, USB, Bluetooth, colorful audio spectrum. You know, that's a lot of goodness there for one little amplifier. So yeah, it's Bluetooth 5.0. It's got binding posts on the back. It says 50 watts by two. It says it supports two ohms to eight ohms. Very high signal to noise ratio. Let's find out what's in the box. Today we're gonna to look at this one by Duke Audio. The Hi-Fi Wireless Bluetooth Digital Amplifier. I believe the model is called the Tone. You can see it's got the volume on the top. It's got some VU meters. You know how we love VU meters. So let's open it up, see what's in the box. We have a shield. Here we have the owner's manual. So according to this, it says 50 watts by two but I'm pretty sure this is a TPA 3116 chip. So that's the theoretical maximum of that particular chip. Yeah, I can't wait to see the VU meters. Use it with MP3, phone, tablet, laptop, computer, whatever you want. All right, let's see what else is in here. Oh, nice. They give you a 3.5 millimeter to RCA adapter. It's always useful, 1.5 meters, very nice. Oh, they also give you 3.5 to 3.5 millimeter tip ring sleeve. It's about three feet in length or one meter. Oh man, they even give you a USB cable. USB to micro, micro USB. We'll have to see what that's for. Here's the US power plug, 110. And also, you know, rather beefy. Power supply, 19 volt, 3.42 amps. It's green, so that must be good. That means it's uh, green power. You big dummy. And here, this little teeny only thing is the amp. Oh man, this thing is very lightweight. Very light, ooh, look at that. Ooh, what's up? Who's that, who's that handsome looking dude? Thing is shiny. Does have some clickiness to the volume. We love no volume knobs. There's a power button. There is headphone jack. Uh, is that microphone? I can't tell what that is. And then there's USB, micro USB. Look at that. Ooh, very fancy bonding post for your speaker outputs. Line level inputs for your RCA ends. Nine volts to 24 volts. So you actually could use this in a car if you wanted to because it'll work off 12 volts. However, it will not put out that much power at 12 volts. I'm guaranteeing that. But wow, this thing is super lightweight. It is plastic. It is not aluminum. Made in China. Duke Audio. See, it does say max output 50 watts by two. So let's get it. Oh, look, clicky, clicky. Let's get it hooked up to the power supply. And then we will um, try it out. See how much power it puts out. What you say? You ready? Let's do it. Hold on, before we start the test, let's check out the dimensions. 3.46 inches by 2.76 by 2.05. What about that shiny display? Before we show you that, we've got to show you the beautiful bean footage. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch. Smash me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the dyno tests. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. Also, you'll notice 14.56 showing up on the voltage. That is the power source. That is not the voltage provided to the amp. And also, 1 kilohertz is what we're going to be using. Now, please realize also we're using a 65-watt power adapter, so don't expect any numbers larger than 65 watts. 
First up, 8 ohm stereo. No ratings are provided. Let's try that certified test. 1 kilohertz up to 1% THD. Notice channel 2 counted up faster. 18 watts for each channel. Unfortunately, there is no way to gain match the individual channels. So channel 2 did count up faster and it appeared to be the amplifier because I switched the inputs and it did not matter. 18 watts uncertified as well. So that means it just hits a wall when it gets to the point where it runs out of power. Let's see if dynamically it does any more than 18. And it looks like 18 watts is where we're at. Yep, 18 watts dynamic as well. Four ohms, this is where it's rated 50 watts by two max. Again, we know based on the power supply that's provided, it's not gonna be able to do that much, but we get right at 30 watts. 30 watts on one channel, 25 on the other. That is to 1% THD. Let's try it up to clipping. And virtually the same, 30 watts and 29 watts. What about that dynamic pulse tone? See if the amp has any more dynamic power. Typically, these TPA chips do not have much dynamic power at all. And yeah, right at 31 and 32 watts per channel. So pretty much dead on there, just over 30 watts. A little shy of the 50. And the results here are going to show you not quite 50 by 2. Again, the supplied power supply is only capable of 65 watts, so you're nowhere gonna get that much. And we'll have to find out in a later video if you guys wanna see it, will this amp actually do that much with more power? Now let's flip the amp over and take off the four screws on the bottom and find out what makes it tick. Pretty sure this runs off the TPA3116 chip. Let's look at the different sections. There's a 3.5 millimeter aux input, headphone jack, and LED display panel there powered by the top part. At the bottom, we have the Bluetooth, RCA inputs, amplifier, and speaker outputs. You can see the 63 volt, 680 microfarad caps here that are on the board. And there's some smaller caps there for filtering as well on the input board. And there's also uh, some cabling that jumps between the two different sections on little small wiring harnesses. And here I'll show you the amplifier, what it looks like. I wasn't able to get the whole amp out of the enclosure, unfortunately, because of the way the screws were lined up. And I didn't want to break it because I still want to do some more tests with it. But there, it's hard to see, but the chip is in there somewhere behind those caps. And not sure if it has a heat sink on or anything. One thing you'll notice here too is on the back, the binding post the holes for the speaker jacks are upright instead of sideways. That made it a little bit of a pain to stick speaker wires in there. Now let's try the Bluetooth connection and see how good it connects and how quick it connects. On the top of the amplifier, the volume control is also a mode selector. So if you press that in until you see the Bluetooth icon, which is green, how ironic is that? On your device, you should see Duke Audio Tone and just touch it. And then it should actually just show up in your list as Duke Audio Tone. And that's all there is to it. It's now connected. The light stays solid. Let's try out some crock pot. See how it sounds real quick. For your listening pleasure, we have a demo as well as your viewing pleasure. We have the VU meters. Check them out. In addition to Bluetooth, we have headphone output, 3.5 millimeter input, as well as USB input. First off, we're gonna check out that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and see how it sounds.
as expected, when you plug this in, it mutes the sound, and I had to put on some other music to jam to. Next up, let's find out if the 3.5 millimeter input and the RCA input on the back are different. All right, so I have something playing here through the RCA jacks right now. I can show you by unplugging one. one out so I wanted to see what happens when you plug something into this front RCA jack I'm gonna go ahead and start my track see if it does both or if it switches looks like it's gonna switch if it switches back to the other one. Okay. Okay, so you can still switch between the two. Oh, cool, so it's got an extra input. Now we'll try the USB connection into a Windows 10 computer and see how it works. All right, let's plug this into the good old PC. See if it shows up as a sound card and we'll try to play some music off of it. Ah, I already hear it through the speakers. Setting it up. BR21 shows for the output. All right, we got a thumb drive here. We got some music. Let's play Luck Witch. Don't have a whole lot of output. Let's see if I've got more volume here. Oh, yeah, got plenty of volume. Now let's talk about the pros and cons, or the good and the bad, about this amplifier, what I think. First off, very small footprint, has multiple inputs, you can use it as a headphone amplifier, has Bluetooth 5.0, VU meter display, which puts it on the top of my charts, large volume knob, has a binding post outputs for the speakers, you can use banana plugs, or you can just insert the wires. Also, you can use it as a computer sound card, which can be very useful. Give you some nice sounds for your computer. What about things we didn't like? It's only 30 watts per channel, rated 50. The included power supply is a little bit lackluster, needs a little bit more juice. No volume control indicator, no subwoofer output, no two ohm loads, and no tone controls on an amplifier called Tone? What's up with that? Anyway, overall, I thought it was a pretty cool little amp for 50 bucks. Thank you guys should check it out on Amazon. Check out the link in the video description below. I did buy this amp and just wanted to show you guys all about it. I really love the VU displays and the way the front of it is shiny and it's so small. I mean, you can use it for virtually anything. Small little system in your bedroom. I hook it up to your computer. There's all different kind of ways you can use amps like this. Appreciate you guys watching as always. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. The Duke Audio Tone, let's try it 2.67 ohms. Not sure if it'll handle this low, but we're gonna try it one kilohertz certified. Nope, looks like it shut off. All right, so it shut off. Doesn't like me very much. 19 and 26 watts. So the amp shut off 2.67 ohms with the certified test. I'm gonna try the dynamic test, one kilohertz. Looks like it'll do that test. 40 and 42 watts.